What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you about the on joint break 2D method. So let's begin. We're going to start by creating a really simple scene. First we need to create a sprite. Right click in the project panel, click create, sprites, square. The name of the square doesn't matter. Drag and drop this square into our scene. Add a box collider 2D component to it. Make a duplicate of this square and bring it down here and resize it. This is going to be our ground game object. So rename this to ground. Make another duplicate, bring it over here. Stretch it a little bit on the Y axis and rename this to block. Make another duplicate and and bring it over here and resize it to look like this and rename this to joint 01. Also add a rigid body 2D component to it. After that, make a duplicate of joint 01 and bring it over here and rename that to joint 02. All right, now select joint 01 and add a fixed joint 2D component to it. The fixed joint 2D component is added down here. Then drag and drop joint 02 into the connected rigid body field of the fixed joint 2D component. All right, so now joint 02 and joint 01 are joined together. So when I play the game, as you can see, both the game objects are behaving as if they are joined together. All right, now I'm going to set the break force for fixed joint 2D to 0.1 because I want this joint to break. And now hit play. As you can see, the joint broke. Now I'm going to add a new script to joint 01, call it joint script 01 and open it up in mono develop. Now in joint script 01, add a new void method called on joint break. 2D. It's important that you write the name exactly as I've written it, otherwise this is not going to work. And this method takes in a joint 2D parameter, so joint 2D, J2D, and within this method, we're just going to call debug.break. This basically pauses the editor. So debug.break, hit save, go back to Unity, and now when I run the game, as you can see, the game has been paused over here. All right, so let me explain how this is working. We have a script, joint script 01, and within the script, we have a method called on joint break 2D. And because joint script 01 is attached to this game object, this game object being joint 01, if any 2D joint attached to this game object breaks, then on joint break 2D will automatically be called. Now, the reason I added debug.break over here is to show you that this method is actually being called automatically automatically when any joint attached to this game object. Again, this game object being joint 01. And this is in the case of any 2D joint. I've just used fixed joint 2D as an example. If you want to learn how the fixed joint 2D component works, I've done a tutorial on this. The link's going to be in the top right corner of the screen right now. So you can go check it out if you want. But for now, I'm going to remove the fixed joint 2D component and add a relative joint 2D component instead, just to show you that this does work with all the 2D joints. So I've added the relative joint 2D component and just as before, I'm going to drag and drop joint 02 into the connected rigid body field of the relative joint 2D component. Remember, joint script 01 is still attached to joint 01. So if any joint, any 2D joint attached to this game object breaks, then our on joint break 2D method will be called. I'm going to set the break force to 0.1 so that the joint breaks. I'm going to play the game. And as you can see, again, when the joint broke, on joint break 2D was called, and within on joint break 2D, debug.break was called. Now, on joint break 2D, as you can see over here, takes in a joint 2D parameter. This joint 2D is basically the joint that just broke. And after on joint break 2D has been called, the joint will automatically be removed from the game object, which is basically what happens when a 2D joint breaks. So because this joint 2D parameter is being passed into this method, we can actually get information about the joint that broke, the game object that the joint was attached to, any connected rigid body that was attached to that joint, and so on. Let's take a look at this. So I'm going to change our debug statement to debug.log j2d dot I'm typing J2D because as you can see over here, the joint 2D that was passed in, I've named it J2D. So J2D dot, let's start with game object dot name and let's see if we get the right value or not. Hit save, go back to Unity and I'm gonna bring up the console window over here. And now as you can see when the joint breaks, joint 01, which is the name of the game object that this joint was attached to, is printed in the console. We can also find out the type of the joint. To do that, you can type j2d.getType. And this is a method, so don't forget these two brackets. Hit save, go back to Unity. And now when I play the game, when the joint breaks, you see over here, Unity Engine dot relative joint 2D. Now, just a quick note, I have also done a tutorial on the relative joint 2D component. So if you want to learn how the relative joint 2D component works, I'm going to put up a link in the top right corner of the screen right now. Go check it out. But yeah, let's continue. So the break force has been set to one. And if the reaction force magnitude of this relative joint 2D is more than the break force, 
then the joint is going to break. So we can actually find out what the reaction force magnitude was right before the joint broke. Now these are just examples that I'm giving you. You actually have an entire list over here. If you type J2D dot, you're going to get an entire list of options that you have over here. So in our case, we can find out reaction force dot magnitude. Hit save, go back to Unity. And now when I run the game, as you can see, the reaction force magnitude is given and clearly it is more than the break force, so the joint broke. Now, as I mentioned before, on joint break 2D works with all the 2D joints. And I've just shown you two examples. You can try the others yourself. I realize that this is a very small topic to make a tutorial on, and I could very easily have mentioned this in any of the other 2D joint tutorials that I'm doing. But the reason I didn't do that, the reason I decided to make a separate tutorial out of this is because I didn't want people getting confused and thinking that on joint break 2D only works with certain 2D joints. That's not the case at all. It does work with every single 2D join. So yeah, that's it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you'd like to check out more of my videos, you can head over to my channel. You'll find lots more videos over there. And there should be two videos up on the screen right now as well. If you'd like to check out my music channel, it's called Demkey's Music. The link should be up on the screen right now. If you'd like to help me out with a donation, my PayPal email address is mentioned up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.